<sighs> All right. I finished grinding. Ah, oh, it's been a heck of a day, but I think we're ready. This time, Zero Mess is going down. Hello, everybody. We're back once again. Uh, I've got my energy drink. I've got my sugar. I've got my lucky sweatband. I think we've got everything we need this time. And this time, we're, we're gonna get her. We're gonna get him. We're gonna see that ending. Because you know what? To quote Kirito from the legendary Sword Art Online Abridged, my numbers are bigger than his now. Yeah. <laughs> On the plus side, uh, we just need to get back through and do the final boss and watch the ending, so... Hopefully, this will be a, it's a slightly shorter stream than usual. We'll just be able to wrap this one up and put a lid on it before I move into Final Fantasy V, which I'm not, I'm not doing tonight. I, I, after all this, no. I am exhausted, and I just I want to put a capper on this. I want to do this. I'm in the mode. I'm in the zone. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. We're going to do it. So, uh... So what do you think you think? It's like, what do you think? It's like, do you want to, anyone to want to take guesses on how high I grind it up? How much I just went in and just went like, boom, just do this. Just boom, over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Got any guesses? Mm, let's see. Well, I'm higher than 80. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. There was even a trophy for having everybody at least 70. Oh, yeah, I got past that. <laughs> no, we are we are well ready for this. Um, it was actually kind of surprising. I actually found a few people who actually had similar experiences where they were coming in at, like, well, mid-50s, upper 60s. And, well, there were some people who were like, yeah, no, you should totally be able to beat Zero Mose at that level. What I found out as I kept digging in the threads was it looks like that result is incredibly dependent on which version of the game you're playing. Like, in some versions there were easy mode and hard mode. Pixel Remaster doesn't have that. Um, in some versions of the game, people are like, oh, yeah, you need to at least be 70. Some people are like, oh, yeah, I did it like 45. So, I mean, apparently more than any other game I've seen so far in this series, it's been like, yes, this is very version dependent on how difficult Zero Miss is. And I don't know if that's just how the logic kind of filters out behind the scenes, like how fast his ATB far bar fills... Like, how prone he is to doing retaliations. All sorts of different things. But, I felt a little bit better knowing the fact that I wasn't alone. I was starting to feel like a real dummy at first last night during the break when I was looking at everyone. I was like, oh yeah, no, it's just uh, anybody with like half a brain cell can beat him at level 55. I'm like, really? 55? Really? But no. Very version dependent. So, uh, heads up before we get in there. Uh, if you're playing through the Pixel Remaster yourself, I would definitely say you want to be at least level 70 uh, across the entire party to get, like, your numbers high enough to, like, um, survive Zeromus on the Pixel Remaster. Which makes sense, especially since they, like, put a little thing that, like, there's an achievement specifically to get all of your party to level 70. I didn't know that at the time, but that's a pretty good indicator that, like, this is where you want to be. Um, and then you have the numbers kind of, like, to, to buffer 
health and defense and everything like that. But that being said, uh, I think we've uh, we're ready. All right, switching into my game mode here. What do you guys think about the new starter music, by the way? We're using my uh, Beat the Black Knight Chaos remix that I did when Stranger of Paradise came in. It's just really just a pinball theme song for the Black Knight pinball machine. But then, for some reason, I just, with Garland, the Black Knight, and everything in Stranger of Paradise, I threw in a bunch of, like, quotes from the demo of Stranger of Paradise over it to make it sound like they're talking about Chaos and the Garland and all that stuff. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because that's what kept going through my head whenever he said chaos and I beat the chaos I don't know all right we're here this is the last one time the last one we're doing it I know it gold piss Fusoya Yes, we have to do all of this again. Burn! You know, I honestly thought we were going to have to fight Zemus here, too. As, like, um... A first phase boss or something like that. But I was actually kind of surprised that they get, just had the NPCs kill his first phase for you. And you just got to switch to the final boss battle. Which apparently did have phases in it? But it, you barely tell. Like, the only time you can tell there's a phase change? Yes, no, cast Meteor! I'm ready. How futile. <laughs> yeah, the only time he, uh... You ever notice he actually changes into his next phase is he'll heal for not max... It, I mean, it only shows 99999. But he actually heals back to full health, which is 60-something thousand. And that's how you know he's gone into his next phase, but if you, it's like blink and you miss. There's no visual change to the model or anything. Doof. That's how I feel. We, we did it. You have much strength. It is a shame that Zemus had such control over you. All right. All of you have come. Yeah, but we were one second too late. I was supposed to take care of him. Cecil. Hmm. Cecil. My god, he's turned into a small fire smiley face. I am evil. I am the hatred of Zemus. I am Zeromus. I loathe all. His death has caused his hatred to grow. We have made him stronger! Zemus. No. Now you are Zeromus. This time I will see it to, see to it that you are completely destroyed. It is time for you to disappear! Yeah, I've got a slight hunch here. I don't think this is gonna work. Slide. Hutch. <laughs> I like how Meteor heals him. Meteor has no effect. Use the crystal. I feel like this crystal should have been set up better in the long run. You chose the dark past. The crystal cannot cleanse your sins. You are bound forever by darkness. Unlike your brother, who was bound forever by darkness until he looked in a mirror 
pulled the sword from the stone. You know, we weren't really kind of clear on exactly how all that happened, but... Now he's not bound by darkness. Suffer. Die. My hatred will continue until all is destroyed. It is your turn. Come, join me in hell. Elda? Cecil and the others are in danger. So I see. Now is the time to pray for them. Pray for them and this planet, because we are so boned. Palum, Borum, we must gather everyone's prayers and send them to Cecil. Like a care package. Maybe one with, like, maybe some fruits on little sticks? They probably would like that. Sheeshaw. Please, take my strength. I'm gonna kill the whole lot of you if you don't come back here alive. Please return to us safely. Do it for this land, and my land. You have our support, and my doll's support. We miss you. We pray for you as well. We don't know who they are. We still, do we know, have we figured out who the purple dress people are yet? Is that Troya, or uh, uh, Fabul? I have no idea, honestly. I'm. Come on. For Cecil, for everyone! Moon, I call out to you. Please accept our prayers. Moon is up there like, um... I'm, I'm just going to pretend not to be home. Golbez. You must use this. Received crystal. Again, probably could have been set up better in the long run. Seeing how it is the deciding factor in the final battle. Zero miss. I won't lose. I can't. Oh, you can! <laughs> I can speak from experience. Yes, you can. <laughs> But as you can see here, my numbers are, um, slightly bigger. Mm hmm Oh, I can skip through their dialogue. Good. I've read this so many times already. Keep your focus! Don't die on us! Cecil's the last one to get healed. <sighs> okay, deep breaths, everybody, deep breaths. Gotta use the crystal. Zero Mess reveals his true form. It's a dentist! Gur gur gur. Actually, it's this creepy-looking thing. I have no idea what it is, but... Wait... There. And since we learned that Rydia doing magic is kind of just a bad idea on this fight, I just gave her a bow and arrow. She does pretty good damage with it. Heal. Some attacks.
Black Hole, which I was reading about it, and it's kind of hilarious. He actually puts you on, a, like, um, an ability called Sap, which causes you to, uh... lose health periodically? The black hole also nullifies that? So, it, like, only sticks around for a few seconds after Big Bang until he does the next black hole. See, now it's a... Is it just me? Is this now just a piece of cake now? The numbers! It was all numbers. So the shaking means he's going to be doing his Big Bang attack, uh, not the Dragon Ball Z one, but that one. And at this one, we're just going to keep people attacking and Kane jumping. Eh, never mind, he's dead. See, did you catch when he went into his next phase? I didn't. We did it! Celebrate! Party! As long as evil exists in the hearts of the living, I, I cannot perish. Grr! Well, I'll tell you this, Zeromus. I know now, more than anything ever, the moon is light! Oh, dang! Pop! Well done! I could have done myself, but, you know, I wanted you kids to have a try. I had no idea you all possessed such strength. Perhaps... The people of the Blue Planet have evolved beyond us Lunarians already. Cut! Fusuya! It is not evolution! <laughs> yeah, you might be right. Zero Miss's last words bother me, though. As long as evil exists... True evil will never die. Every living creature has at least a touch of evil in its heart. Alongside goodness. And an appendix. As long as there is light and darkness, the overworld and the underworld, it will be so. Are you confirming that the dwarves were the evil ones? <laughs> Good exists because of evil exists, and it was your good that destroyed Zemus' evil. Oh, stop it already. There was nothing to it. What are you talking about? I was surprised Zemus didn't try to control you. I'm sure you have enough evil inside. Nope, my heart is filled with goodness all the way. Well, it's time I returned home. What will the rest of you do now? I think we'll go home, too. Yes, there are people worried about us. I she. I'm glad you have such wonderful friends. I wish I had friends. I look forward to the day we meet again. May I come with you? You wish to join me? Yes, I'm 
cannot return home. Not after all I've done. I would very much like to meet my father's people. Ah, oh, yes. Lunarian blood throw flows through your veins. Very well. Come along. Tom, you've been replaced. But you must be ready for a night long, long sleep. Oh, I am. Thank you. You sounded very worried when you called my name, Cecil. Does that mean you've forgiven me? Mm. How foolish of me. Of course not. I've caused too much suffering for that. We are off to spend many years in slumber. We pray that the blue planet will be peaceful forevermore. Come. Yeah. Cecil. Are you certain you want to part this way? He's your brother. Goodbye, everyone. Cecil! Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye, my brother. Cecil. Thank you. Wait, how? One born of a dragon, bearing darkness and light, will rise to the heavens over the still land. The moon's light eternal brings a promise to earth. With bounty and grace, I was, I was expecting a fourth line there. Before long, the moon would set forth on a voyage once more, seeking out its light. Though of shared bloodlines, time's march keep the two separated. One on Earth, one on the moon. And I'm assuming this is Venus and Mercury that are spinning around here? So is that why we only have one moon now? Is because one is full of aliens that went off on a journey? We shall begin today's training. Yes, sir. Hmm. Where's Palum? By the way, I'm loving this music. It's so 80s-tastic. Really, really bringing the sweatband in. Oh no, not again. And then, I cast a wizard on the creatures that we encountered on Mount Ordeals. Whack! Beat the crap out of your brother. How? How many times are you going to be late for training? The Elder is really angry. How many times do I have to scold you before you learn? It will be two years before you even half the sage tell I was. As your punishment, you must now try and train twice as hard as your sister today. That's not fair. I think it's very fair. When will you come to realize that there are responsibilities? You are heir to the throne. 
I know. I know. Jeez. Sorry, Colonel. Your mouth says you know, but your actions say otherwise. Yeah, yeah. The correct words would have been, yes, sir. All right. I'll shape up. I can't help but think about Iridia, though. Whoa. Your Highness, have you been listening to anything I said? Mm, something about CQC. No! I said the taxes are overdue! What a courageous young lady. Yes, I never really thought she would come back. Rydia! Rydia, why do I have fangs and you don't? I wish you didn't, I didn't have fangs so I could be like you. How can I be like you? What are you talking about? It doesn't matter what we look like. What matters is how many people we can kill with our minds. With her around, the future looks bright for the lands of summons. I think. Indeed. I'm sure she will get more beautiful by the day. That's... that's not what I meant, dear. I know. The more important thing is what you're like on the inside, not the outside. Isn't that right, Cecil? Is Cecil somewhere? Honey! You are queen now. Try calling me your my king instead of honey. I know, but I can't stand to be so formal. Oh no, it is time for training. Now we must fight. Yeah. Oh honey, a king shouldn't be... Don't say that. I think Yang will create a wonderful kingdom full of people who could kick my butt. Your Highness! Oh, kids. Sorry. Your Highness! Play the song about the paladin again for us. I will, but only after I finish my work. You want the castle back to the way it was, right? Right? Wow, such a castle. Yeah! That's a promise, right? Anna. I hope you're watching over me. I'm helping the people of Damsian. I'm caring for the people, other people, other, I'm caring for other people, as I cared for you, like you said I should. I hope you and Tell are having a fine time together. Lolly ho! We need to repair the castle with great haste! Your Majesty, we don't have enough materials. Take apart the tanks and remove any useful pieces. There's no need to worry about war anymore. We killed the funny little thing on the moon. Now everything will be peaceful. Father, I wonder how Cecil and his friends are doing. I don't know! I almost forgot to tell you. It seems Sir Cecil and Lady Rosa are to become the new king and queen of Baron. What with them killing the previous king? Oh my! 
and we have been invited to the coronation ceremony. How lovely! Are the dolls coming? No, honey, they're haunted and creepy. Your Majesty, you're not helping fix the castle at all. Of course not! I'm the king! I am the king! <laughs> I was joking! <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Now go take a bite some tanks. Lolly ho! Cecil, Rosa, I cannot bring myself to face you both. Not yet. I must test myself as you did, Cecil, at Mount Ordeals. I will train until I have surpassed my father as a dragoon. Only then shall I return to Baron. Who was my father? Oh, don't you know? He was Rickard. In the other game. No, I don't know how they're connected somehow, but I was in that one too. As a boy. I don't know, I don't write this stuff. But you can tell I have had character development because I've taken off my helmet. See this to follow with future Dragoon, Estinian. Fat Chocobo? Oh yeah, this is the guy with the giant telescope that watches the moon that we talked to like once and then we kept thinking it was going to come into importance and it never did. Corio, that's it. You have to see this. The moon. It's... What am I watching? Why do we have this perspective through that telescope? <laughs> there goes the moon! This bitch empty of evil! Yeet! <sighs> What's wrong, Cecil? I thought... I thought I heard my brother's voice. Really? No, I'm just joshing you. Hey, you two! Why aren't you getting ready? It's the big day! You must have lost track of time. You two can play smoochy face all you want later. Come on, Rosa. Uh, I mean, your majesty... Ooh, a violin version of the main thing. Please just call me Rosa. Well, Rosa, we've got to get you all dressed. And keep some makeup on you. The bride can't keep people waiting. Hold on, we got to run away. I'll be right there. I can't wait to see everyone again. It's been so long. Cecil, are you ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. It wasn't my imagination. I heard my brother's voice say, So long. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Get back in line. It is, you pretty much do make friends with pretty much royalty of every other nation on the planet through the course of this. Except Troya.
Poor Om. Or is it Palum? I can't keep those two track track. The boy. Boy. Hi, so good to be here. Wow. I hope I'm not crashing this wedding. I'm not that much of a wedding crasher usually, you know? <laughs> Oh, she said it doesn't matter how you look on the outside, it's who you are on the inside, because Cecil became a dark knight and then became a paladin. That just clicked. And then they turn to wave at the camera, because why not have a fourth, fourth wall break right at the set last second? To fans across the globe, both past and present, and to the crew who brought the originals to life, we offer a profound and heartfelt thanks. I do like that they end the Pixel Remasters with that message. There we go! Another one down in the books. We did it. We made it. We got to the end. We've seen it. And now, as is tradition, I must give my final thoughts. This is definitely the most epic game we've played so far. Hands down. I'm not going to argue with that. It's just, it, it's globe-spanning. It is... I once wrote that Final Fantasy IV, from what little I had played in my youth, always felt like the Lord of the Rings of the series. And it really does feel like that. It brings up all these different things and kind of spans across running themes and complicated, interesting characters that go through and develop and change. It's something that hadn't been done so far in the series. It was, it was something that were... It really made good use of all the new storage space and technology that jumping to the Super Nintendo brought. And with that, I mean, it just kind of really just sold me like epic fantasy type stuff. Uh, let's see, let's... um. I suppose in terms of negatives, though, I would probably say that there were at least a few. There were some times where things just kind of felt like... They kind of just drifted off and I wasn't sure what to make of it. Like, I, you completely forget Edward was in the game for a while. Like, you find him in Troya, he's recovering, and then he's nowhere until the end. Like, he, he doesn't show up again until, like, one small cutscene in the scene where you fight, um, the Giant of Babel. And then, boom, nothing until the very end. It just, he just barely becomes a plot element at all. And I get that his story was more or less done, but no one else got treated to that level. Including other people that ended up getting bedridden. And I suppose that would also be kind of part of my big complaint, is that how many fake-out deaths there were in this story. I mean, one or two I can get. It's a very long story, and it makes sense that sometimes there'd be some dramatic points where you're like, <gasps> What happened? Are they okay? But it's like, every time they needed a plot beat... Someone risks their life, nobly sacrificing themselves for the cause, only to then just be found out that they're just in a bed somewhere. That happens three times in the second half of the game, and it just was one of those things where it's like, I can't, I can't take sacrifices seriously anymore. I kept expecting tell to come back, to the point where when he first finally showed up at that little thing at the very end with the Zeromus fight, I was sitting there going, did I forget something? Did I actually forget that tell is out actually dead? Because I thought they no-sold his death, too. 
Because that's just where the game was going with it. I mean, I get that... I, well, I was going to say, I was going to say, it's like, this is like, oh, well, you know, this is very early on in the series, and death is something that they um, really don't want to deal with. It's very heavy subject matter. But they've killed a bunch of people in the other three. Well, especially two and three. Two especially. A lot of people died in two. In fact, all the people who died in 2 had their own little afterlife adventure that got added on into the Game Boy Advance version. So many people died in 2 that they literally could have made another party out of them. So when it comes down to it, it just felt like over and over and over. And a lot of it was like, why? What was the real the point of saving Yang? I don't know. He, I mean, there wasn't exactly anything plot-wise other than, yeah, he becomes the king of Fabul at the end. But Fabul already had a king. The other king just stepped down. So it's not like even like, oh, well, someone has to take the throne. No, the throne was fine. So why did Yang, out of everyone, live? Sid lived. Why? He doesn't do anything in the last half. So, I mean, I, I, and then it makes all the sacrifices and all the emotion that comes afterwards pointless. Because you find out, oh, they've just been kicking it in a bed. I, I, that would be my biggest complaint, was just how many times that happened. As I said, I understand if they did that once. And I mean, the one, the first time they did it with, with Rydia... Uh, falling off the boat on Leviathan. Great! That was really well done. You actually were concerned for her. And when she came back, there was some real narrative weight to that. But at the same time, you lost Edward. And Edward just ends up in a bed in Troya. And he doesn't even contribute to that plot. Like... There's nothing there that goes on that you can't sit there and go, oh, yeah, you know, that's, uh, we needed Edward to help us get through that. Or, oh, good thing Edward was here to convince the, the leadership of Troya to work with us. No! Complete afterthought. It was solely for a plot point about, like, him playing a harp, which ended up nullifying the Dark Elf's thing. Which, again, was just padding. So he could have died, and that would have actually led to even greater weight, is that they found... If you found his grave when you made it to Troya. And it's like, oh yes, he we, we found his body, he washed ashore, he was so damaged and broken that, hey, you... you he could not survive his injuries and he perished and we you know gave him this place of honor and things like that the only reason he gets to live is because Damsian does not have a hierarchy but Damsian doesn't have a kingdom either like they are off the map at this point you could have honestly just had the survivors live in Baron which would have you know been some consolation since it was Baron that bombed them But then at least that would have added some narrative weight to like, oh my god, what happened to Rydia? Because she was just a little girl when we last saw her and she fell off the boat. Oh crap. Yang, on the other hand, got to come back from the dead twice. So... And at least the first time he joins your party for a while... comes back as evil for a little bit. Why? I guess Zemus took control of him too? Because there was evil in his heart that he could foster? Like, but Yang didn't seem like... I have no idea. There were some weird hiccups in the plot like that. Where it's just kind of like... Felt very much like a, a DM just kind of... Or a game master just kind of going... Yes, 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 here, here's, here's something to get along with the plot. 
and at least served a little bit because, you know, it reinforced the whole mind control thing, which continued to be a plot point, considering how many times it happened to Kane. But then eventually it gets revealed that Golbez, in turn, is also under mind control by someone else. Who you never even get to fight. Now compare that to, let's, let's throw in the crowning moment of awesome in this game, which was not the final battle, not the going to the center of the moon to face uh, uh, an imprisoned alien warlord whose evil is so strong and hatred is so strong that it literally manifests into a demon. I'm talking about the giant of Babel fight when literally every kingdom you have interacted and helped with the entire game unites all into one giant battle to help you get a chance at taking down this world-destroying robot that has just shown up on your planet. That, that was cool. That was great. That, that just that moment of unity. Um... Even though it ended up contributing to that previous no-cell death thing with Palom and Porum, which, I I mean, they were just petrified. They weren't dead. I'm, I'm not surprised that they were able to come back from that. But at the same time, why couldn't we have done it? I mean, we literally walked past them at one point. Way after the Vact. And we could just, you know, gold needle, poke. I don't know. <sighs> so, what will I say? Do I like it better than three, which was my current highlight? I don't know. Like, it definitely feels like a grander story than three. But three just had all of the elements working together so well. Like, it didn't feel like anything was loose. The, the character deaths, when they happened, felt like they had some weight. It didn't ever feel like it no sold your actions, except for the dude who killed himself in the tower. To save it, and then you find out that he just hops out of it later on. That kind of sucked. I don't know. It, if anything, so far, if I had to make a tier ranking, I might put this on par with three? Hmm. So yeah, I'd put this one on par with three, and then one, and then two at the bottom, because, as I've said on Twitter, <laughs> let there be no debate in the Final Fantasy community, two is the worst. <laughs> and I know there's probably someone out there like, I like to. Well, okay, but, I mean, masochists are a thing. Favorite character here? I'm going to have to go with... Oh, I suppose I should also talk about the fact that this is actually our first, like, romantic story well as well in the games. With Rosa and Cecil, and actually a love triangle with Kane. although really there's no contest. Kane doesn't have a chance from the get-go. He just pines from a distance because he wants, you know, what they have. It's a very Wolverine, Jean Grey, Cyclops thing. Where it's like, it's no doubt from the get-go that Rosa and Cecil are a thing. And Kane just wants what Cecil has. You know. Jesse's girl style. Probably hums that to himself while he puts on his helmet. And I thought that was actually really well done. Like, some of the emotional moments with, with Rosa and Cecil are actually really touching. In terms of, like, believing that these two people actually care for each other. And actually, I mean, are romantically entangled in some way. It's not like they fall in love through the course of the story. They pretty much are pretty much established from the get-go as being romantically interested in each other. And it's not till like Rosa almost loses, loses her life in the process that Cecil's just kind of like 
gets his head out of butt, his butt about, you know, doing something about it. But then, then her showing up on the moon, which I called it, uh, and the big, you know, her big damn kiss moment with Cecil, that was very touching. I know I make jokes while I'm doing these streams, but that honestly was very touching to me. Same with the, this, another emo good emotional moment that really got to me was Palm and Porum sacrifice. Them kind of turning themselves to stone to save everyone else. They're kids. They should not be considering, like, throwing their lives away like that, but they do it in a heartbeat, and it's wrenching. Which is saying something for a game like this, that they can make you feel that way about those two. I'm glad that they were covered. I was really happy to see them back. I just thought, at a twist of mechanic, like, oh yeah, the Elder cured us. Okay. I mean, we had some interesting villains. Golbez, not everything he's ch caught up to seeing, uh, chalked up to what he seems. Rubicant, great character, great noble evil warrior type, dark warrior type. Uh, Blood Knight, very concerned about honor and having a good fight and having a great battle. Heals you every time, sometimes to my frustration. I like the idea of the fact that it's like slowly indicated like there's this advanced technology okay at first it seems kind of fantastical but then you find out no it is just technology it's very advanced advanced technology it's that whole thing about how advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic and because of that you end up slowly getting through this game and you're just going oh oh Oh, and then finally you get to the moon, and it's just kind of like, where'd all this advanced technology come from? By the way, aliens. Very ancient aliens. And... <laughs> of course, the revelation that it's supposed to be our Earth is... A weird choice? Uh... Illusion of Gaia did the same thing around the same time on the Super Nintendo, and I thought that was really weird. But at least that one ended with the game, like, with the world, like, shifting into a, um, transforming itself through magic into the world we know. Whereas this one, I don't remember a giant hole that goes into the land of the dwarves being in South America. My wife apparently thinks the Lunarians are going to come and take our jobs. <laughs> but they're not even Lunarians. I mean, they live on a moon. There's two moons, which I never caught before. And I said the two moons used to be one. I don't even think that's true. There used to just be one moon. And then the Lunarians built another one to sleep in. And then it took off at the end to go to parts unknown. So they're not even from there. They're from some other planet that used to be between Mars and Jupiter. Which I'm just now occurring to me that it might be indicating that the planet that the Lunarians originally came from became the asteroid belt. I don't even know if that's how that works. Let's ask Superman. He's an expert on planets blowing up. There was kind of a Superman vibe with Cecil, wasn't there? Like, he's the half-son of a, a alien civilization that fled their home and... Yeah. And then, Zero, and then Fusoya is very, like... I'm Marlon Brando and this is an illusion of me. In the, in the, in the, in the Crystal Palace. You know, you know, you know what I mean. Who was Cecil's mom? Who did Clue Ya get with? Also, does Cecil have like a Lunarian name to go along with Cecil? Like Cecil Harvey is his name in the game, but yes, 
It doesn't come up very uh, at all, except that if you read the exter external materials, but his last name is Harvey. Um, but yeah, Cecil Harvey. I have to wonder, does he have like a... a does he have like Cal Hal? Does he have a, a, a Lunarian name too? I imagine it would end with like C Ya. <laughs> I just realized that joke. Ah. But like, in the like first half of Cecil and Ya because that apparently is their last name. Fu So Ya, Clu Ya. I don't know. But yeah, I think that is just that was some of the. Really good, real good game. Really liked it. Um, really had fun there, except for right at the end, where the final boss is insane, and apparently that varies so much on version to version of the game and port to port over the years that sometimes you can have a real easy time with this guy, and then in some versions of the game, he is darn near unkillable unless you grind a ton. And I just hope that does not become a trend going ahead. I mean, I know once you get to seven, I, w I was able to beat that one before without too much in the way of grinding. So really, I'm really just kind of worried about five. Because I've never played five. Speaking of which, that's the next game of the series. We'll be starting on that here sometime here in October. I want to get done editing all of the video for this, for this game before I start the next one. Um... But yeah, we're going to get started on that one. It'll be the last Final Fantasy game I have not played. No, we're not going to be doing the after years with this one. Because <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll come back to it. How about that? I'll, I'll, I'll make that wager. Maybe if we can get enough people to tell me, you out there in the audience, you have the power. If you enough people tell me, I want to see you cover the after years. Maybe I'll go back and do it. But right now, I'm going to continue with the main series. So. Huh, I think that's going to be it for me. I knew it was going to be a short night tonight with all this, but. Let's see. Do I get to do something? Ooh. Beat the game. Maybe I can run back through and get all the extra goodies in my spare time. Anyway, what was in the extras? Bestiary. Bunch of things I missed. Wow. The gallery. Oh yeah, we looked at the gallery in the 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 for the third game, so we might as well look at the fourth, for the fourth game here. There's a title screen. The Darkness and the Light. Cecil's A and B. Cecil, Rosa, and Kane. Ce Rosa's apparently sleeping on them, I guess. I don't know. Comrades. Rudy has got some Tina Turner hair going on up there. Cecil Harvey. See? Told you. Harvey. Cecil Harvey B. Okay, Amano, I love your artwork usually, but you got some real lot Rob Liefeld thing going here. Cecil Harvey C. Cecil Harvey D. Cecil Harvey at the beach. Kane Highwind. And no, I was not joking about that comment. It, it, it is established in uh, Final Fantasy 2 that uh, the last Dragoon um, Rickard adopts young a young boy uh, and his mother who are the last survivors of his kingdom after he's been gone. Um, and the boy's name is Kane. So he becomes Kane Highwind. Whoa! Is that what he's supposed to look like underneath his stuff? Rickard Highwind? Rickard. Rickard 
Yes. No. No. Rose's last name is apparently Pharrell. I do love the, the pointy shoulder pad thing that Amano always did. There's young Rydia. There's older Rydia. And there is Tella looking like his fine self. Mm-hmm. All the ladies want Tella. His full name was Edward Chris Von Moyer? His middle name's Chris? Yang Fang Leiden. And man, is he rocking a dad bod there. Palamon Porum. Palamon Porum attacking a lizard thing? I do like the expressions they always draw them with. They are adorable. I am still very much happy with the Ra Macho Man Randy Savage voice for Sid, and this picture proves why. <laughs> Sid Polandina. Edge's last name is Geraldine? Excuse me, Ninja Edge. Geraldine. <laughs> That's even better than his in-game sprite. Oh my god, I love it. Fusoya is just a beard with hands and a head. Golbez, clearly here drawn to look like a parallel to Cecil's Dark Knight form. Also a bit like Garland. Scarmiglione, or as we know him, Paul. Cognazzo, oh god, that's like, actually kind of horrifying. Babaricia, who, yeah... That translated pretty well, actually. Rubicant. Who has... Is he wearing... Does he have clothes on underneath that? I can't tell. Leshy. I don't remember who Leshy was. Zoo. I don't even know if I ran into a zoo. Bone Dragon. B -b 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 bone Dragon! Baron Guard. He looks very angry. Puppeteer. Oh yeah, I remember those guys. I like that drawing. Soldieress. Also known as a weird mix of Terra and Celeste from Final Fantasy VI. Weird. Sorceress. Get that off the screen now. Green Dragon! How many are left in this? Giant Soldier. See, it's like he's got a weird buster arm thing, kind of. Ugh, that thing. White Dragon. Red Dragon? Octomammoth. That's going way back. I actually used that picture for the, the thumbnail on YouTube. Antlion. Wait, does he have a little tiny head like where his eyebrow should be between his eyes? Or like a little tiny mouth? It looks that way, right? It's like jagged little teeth up there. Antlion B. That would have been the scarier version of the fight. <laughs> it was just a mouth opens up in the floor. The mom bomb. Bygen. The Mega Sisters! And a weirder version of the Mega Sisters. The creepy doll thing. 
Jeez, Shadow Dragon. How close are we to the done here? How many are there left? Are they? Oh wow, there's a lot left. Eh. Is this? Oh yeah, it's the little sprite arts. I love these. I really wish they just kept doing this, even though they don't use the sprite art in the newer games, is they just keep doing these little super deformed versions of all the characters. Because they're adorable, I love them. Anyway, I think that's going to be it. Thank you all for coming and joining me as we finally put this one to bed. The grinding was intense, but worth it. We finished it. We didn't even have a hard time with it. We got It was purely a numbers game, really, at that point. It wasn't strategy we were doing wrong. We just Our numbers were too small. We just need bigger numbers. And that's why numbers are important in RPGs. Always. Don't doubt it. Get the bigger numbers... Kill the bosses better. Except for maybe Bahamut, because I don't know if how big numbers I could have... I don't know if I would have been able to survive Mega Flare even with bigger numbers on that one. I think the Mega Flare just automatically did whatever damage you had. I don't know. That one may have been the exception to the rule. You need to use Reflect on that fight. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank everybody. I know it's been a trying few days with trying to get through this one. and Oh boy, now this tell me about getting frustrated and everything. But we did it. I want to thank you all for sticking by me with this. Hanging out. And with that said... Uh, if you want to find my stuff, you can always find me over at Vrykirian.com. That's my main blog. From there, you can find my Twitter and my YouTube. I also post all the videos from my YouTube onto the blog. Uh, so you can constantly just check there and see what's up. I would always appreciate it if you give me a follow, either on YouTube, if you like watching there, or here on Twitch, if you never want to miss one of these little live streams. You can follow me on Twitter, where I sometimes will, or try my best to announce. I don't think yesterday was kind of impromptu, and I didn't really announce it, but I usually announce, usually about an hour beforehand, when I'm going to be going live, or giving out sort of announcements that I am going live. So you can always find me on there, too. That being said... May you walk in the light of the crystal. <laughs>